Hello, I'm back. Part 2 of working on this Mitsubishi. I managed to get a replacement IC at a decent price. This was the last one in stock and it's supposedly it's brand new. So I'm going to go ahead and take the other one out. So now when I worked on this last week, this unit, um, I remembered there was a short between the positive power supply and one of the outputs and the positive power supply was pin 11 and the outputs were 10 and pin number 10 and pin 13 respectively. I've got the ohmmeter set up here so now I can go ahead and check count the pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 open and 11 and 13 I don't think I'm on there right point 0.6 or point 0.5 ohms that's definitely a short so that is the problem then so my next step is to check the input signals going up to the power pack. I'm feeding in the signal through the aux inputs and I've got an audio generator hooked up and it's just going to be, I think it's a standard uh, I'm feeding in a 400 hertz signal. Of course I could feed in a thousand hertz signal and I've got my oscilloscope here ready and then I'm just going to check the inputs um, the input one of the inputs is pin one and the other one is pin 18 and if the signals good up to that point then I guess I'm going to assume everything is um, halfway okay so let me I think I'm gonna have problems getting on here so let me solder on something to one of these pads so my oscilloscope has a here clip has a little grip so here we go, I got something for my scope to grab onto. And that should hold. We'll take a look now at the oscilloscope. And here it is, that's a, the 400 hertz signal now. I didn't bother to change it to a thousand. I'll we'll do the other channel. Okay, here's the Oscilloscope showing the other channel and this one seems to be okay too. Next I'm going to be just checking the outputs to ground. That was pin number 13 to ground. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. And my meter is showing the following. So here is the pin 13 to ground, the output pin, one channel, and showing about 400 some K still charging. Let me go to the other one. That was pin, what did I say, pin 13, that would be pin number 10. So that would mean 12, 11, 10, which would be that, that's about the same, that's looking good. And I also took a quick look, quick look at the components just around that area and checked a couple. They seem to be good. Now I'm going to check the voltages, the positive and negative supply voltages. And then I'm going, going to go ahead and put the IC in. And here you can see I've got new paste on there. Of course, I removed the old paste from the heat sink in the actual receiver too. I just used alcohol and a little tissue and I'm going to go ahead and I've got this nicely smeared up and I'm going to go ahead and put this in. You always have to use new. You can't leave the old on. At least I don't. I don't think it's such a good idea because a lot of times it'll be hardened. So I got the IC in and we're Two, also two screws holding that power pack in. I got those back in and here I checked with my magnifying glass for 
solder bridges, make sure I don't short anything out, and I cleaned this area up with alcohol, Look, looks like I'm ready. I now have a variable isolation transformer hooked up and I'm slowly going to bring the voltage up and I'm watching the current too. Let me go ahead and turn this thing on. Wow, that is one irritating sound. I'm going to have to do something about that. And I'm bringing it up. I'm looking for crackling frying sounds or sparks and none of that's happening and right now it's drawing 150 milliampers which I think is um, okay so later on I'm gonna hook up some loudspeakers but I'm going to conclude this video for now well, thanks for watching